lot of people were probably wondering how all of this started, especially because I've turned down team offers for the last several years. And this off season was a little bit different. People know that I was contemplating what I was going to do with Lowell. I've been co-streaming now for the past two and a half years. I've been live viewing or actually just co-streaming regions. Along came the offer from Cloud9 and I thought if there was ever going to possibly be a chance to return to pro play in some facet coaching, this probably would have just been it, provided that a lot of the stars would end up aligning. And I thought watching Worlds this past year that LCK and LPL teams actually regressed in terms of gameplay. And I thought that it actually looked possible for Western teams to legitimately take games off or even actually upset or beat them outright. And I never ever felt that before in previous years. So I feel going forward it's an actual possibility. And I feel like with the discussions that I've had with C9, I thought there was no better landing spot for me. Obviously, the conversations initially started because a lot of my close friends really wanted me to consider doing this, and namely Fudge and Max. Over the last year, I've talked with them pretty actively. I've known a lot about what's going on. I've tried to help basically any time that I could, same way that I would for other players in the West or anyone else who would reach out to me. But this time there was a legitimate ask to have me come to Cloud9 and help out for the next year. So I gave it a lot of consideration. After thinking about what we could achieve and talking with Jack and then having a pretty heartfelt talk with Joe Marsh from T1, I made the decision to just go ahead and run with it. That was the first time I'd spoke to him personally. We actually had a really nice conversation about what I was trying to build. And he had some several suggestions for me on players I should go or coaches I should actually go look into who that he thought would be good for Cloud9. The two people on the top of that list were Vigar and Max, who I ended up hiring and we loved having as part of our team. What that taught me was that LS was actually a really good judge of the type of coaching uh, staff that we thought was valuable. And very uh, because of that, uh, it gave me a good feeling that if LS ever was to come and join us, he'd be a really good fit for Cloud9. Through the many different iterations of discussions, he was talking with me and Max and Fudge and Blabber, um, trying to figure out what we we're gonna do. Um, uh, and between like between Fudge, Max, Blabber, Vigar, and LS, we came up with some really good ideas on what we could do for our team. Um, and <laughs> interestingly enough, because how difficult this off season was, we spent a lot of time changing that team, changing that configuration based on the circumstances of the hour. And hour by hour that was changing, so we got to know each other really well through that process. At the end of it, it was really becoming clear that he loved the team that we were building and he wanted to be a part of this organization. A lot of people over the last couple of weeks have speculated that a lot of the Korean players that are coming to Cloud9 or a lot of the decisions that have been made uh, lead to me in some way. What I can say is that even while all of these decisions were going on, I had agreed to help Cloud9 regardless of if I would end up joining or not. I thought that the players that have been picked up, Summit, Berserker, are two of the best players that could have been picked up for imports. I think that no one really knows a lot about Berserker, and I've commented on Summit elsewhere on Twitter. He's a player that I've thought very highly of for the last couple of years. The Fudge swap to mid lane was a conversation that I did have with Fudge, and I've spoken very highly of Fudge as a player fundamentally, and I just thought it doesn't matter if you're top or mid lane, you're still gonna be one of the best Western players, if not the best Western player, in a very short period of time. Other stuff that's obviously going on with Academy is I've been very outspoken about the need to scrim against an Academy team and the need to have internal scrims and internal practice. So the Academy team is being stacked with also really high level players and then even other coaches and other staff members that are being brought in are also challenger Korean level players that are also going to participate in both LCS and Academy scrims to help the main team practice and just basically help get the engine running. So what's cool about this is that for the people who, who've watched LS or they've heard him talk about the game in ways that they feel like um, isn't possible to perform or is impossible to act upon, that's what we'll do this year. So we get to platform the ideas that we've been talking about as possible. Uh, we get to platform them as possible by putting them into practice and actually using the ideas that we have against other professional teams. I feel like going into 2022, there's a lot of expectations on this. A lot of people want to see me fail. They want to see the idea, the ideology from everything that I've talked about on co-streams, on Twitter, everywhere fail. And so I know that there's going to be a lot of eyes on Cloud9. I know there's going to be a lot of pressure on that. But I think that if we don't win spring, if we don't win summer, 
if we don't do well at Worlds, I mean, it's a failure. My idea with the roster as it is right now is to deal damage to LPL or LCK teams. Uh, I think it's constructed in a way that has a legitimate chance to do that, and that's what the intent of the roster is there to do. I think that the players that are on the roster are capable of doing that, and I think that with the infrastructure that we've set up at Cloud9, I think that the practice environment, I think everything that's able to be done, is going to lead to the possibility to doing that. And it was going into 2022, welcome to the church, and masses on weekends.